So since Ranked came out, I've been running a little bit of an experiment. I've been playing Golden Pack every single game, 1v1s only, no lobbies, and then noting down the results of every single game. So I was recording my opponent's ELO, my opponent's pack, the final uh, score, you know, if I win 1-0 or lose 6-0, which uh, definitely happened a couple of times, more than a couple, I think. And then the intention was at the end, I was gonna be able to do a little bit of analysis, you know, see if I was improving, see if, uh, you know, what the landscape uh, was in terms of uh, usage of the various packs. And I mean, obviously I had some preconceptions about what that was gonna be like. And uh, at the very end, you'll see all the stats um, and you, you can draw your own conclusions. But uh, I, I think things kind of panned out pretty much the way I would have expected. Now, I'm not a ranked player. I've mentioned this in many other videos. I've hardly played any 1v1. I've played plenty of uh, lobby games, you know, versus lobbies. But 1v1 to me, it never really appealed to me. Um, I understand there's a definitely a, a dedicated core of players who, who just love 1v1 and it's their preferred way to play the game. But it just, uh, it doesn't do it for me. Now, having said that, there are definitely times in the game where it is super satisfying to, um, you know, work out the counterplay to your opponent and then uh, execute it. But of course, the game has a pretty heavy component of randomness. And there are de also times where it's unbelievably frustrating, where you know what your outs are and you can't find any of them and you just lose by default. And equally, it's not real in my opinion at least it's not fun to win when you know that your opponent could be countering you but they just can't roll what they need um now maybe as i get better at this or maybe as i play more of it i'll see that that's not quite as big a factor as it feels to be at the moment i don't know um, I'm only basing this off these first uh, 100 games and since I recorded these matches I've probably played another 30 or so games and I feel like I definitely am getting better. But one of the things you'll notice if you're trying to play Golden Pack is there are very few people playing it. Like a tiny, tiny percentage of people are playing it. And that also means that it's kind of difficult to, you know, research it, to try and get advice from other players, you know, what to do in any given situation. And um, in uh, Haps of Discord, there have been some uh, recent discussions about it and um, Fritz has posted some information as the preeminent Golden Pack player about uh, general strategy. But other than Fritz, I, you know, I don't see anyone playing it. I know um, uh, Sag had posted, I think Sag posted uh, a 1v1 Golden Pack video as well. Um, and just like me is playing Golden Pack only in ranked and 1v1s at least. But, you know, there's just not the wealth of information available compared to Turtle. And so, I mean, to some degree, I was flying blind in this. I was going to be, I, was, I wasn't going to be doing research before I started doing this either. And I didn't intend to look up all the best strategies and then try and just copy paste them. I really wanted to get more of a feel of what it's like if you're just playing from scratch and trying to work out what to do against all the various packs. Now, when we get to the end, uh, you'll see the exact stats on this, but um, one of the problems I was having was that I was facing turtle pack constantly. And so it's very difficult to get matchup experience against the other packs. So uh, golden minor matches, puppy pack and star pack. Obviously, you have a, you know, if you're, if you've been playing the game as long as I have, you understand generally what most of those players are going to be trying to do. But you don't necessarily know exactly what you are supposed to do as a Golden Pack player to counter them or to protect yourself from the, uh, the likely uh, routes that they're going to take. So, um, that in itself is, is definitely an interesting challenge. And, um, like I said, at times it's very satisfying when, when you make the correct assessment and uh, it goes in your favor. But um, I was finding a lot of the time, especially in the early games, you know, when, you know, the first, I don't know, 30 to 50 games where I was losing a lot of games. I was getting into situations a lot of the time where I didn't know 
what I was supposed to be looking for and it would feel like I was just rolling all my gold away and uh, losing as a result. But then the more you get comfortable with the, the pack, the more you understand the sort of premium units that you're looking for in particular level ups and then also how to utilize the the, the level ups that you get, even if they're not, not the best. Um, and sometimes, I mean, like I already said, it's like there is a, a random component. So you really have to have a, a good temperament for it. You know, it's not going to do you any good to get angry when you lose because you low rolled and your opponent high rolled. You know, sometimes there's not going to be anything you can do. So um, I, I, as someone who can, you know, get tilted quite easily, I think, I, I, it probably makes a lot more sense for me to be playing Arena, not playing uh, Ranked. But I was determined to get through this these 100 games. And uh, I think this game is actually probably somewhere in the middle, you know, round about 50, maybe slightly past 50. So I was a little bit more comfortable. I think probably I played 30 or 40 games without going for the gold build one single time. And Manta is definitely a unit that I almost never take in, in Arena. However, um, I decided, you know, I need to broaden my horizons. I need to play more units because if I constantly feel like I can't find anything useful for my team, then there must be units in the pack that I am unfairly passing up. And the I did mention there wasn't a whole lot of uh, research that I did or could do to do with this, but there were some things I knew going in. You know, I knew Flea was probably a, a decent option at times, you know, targeting the, the highest um, health opposing unit for weakness is very good. Un unfortunately, a lot of the packs, except maybe Star, have quite easy counters to it, but it's definitely something that at least makes your opponent think. And I think sometimes it can be beneficial just to force your opponent to make a change, um, even if it's just something in the short term. And uh, so yeah, I've got Flea here, even though it's the uh, the gold build, or rough, you know, I've got two gold pets, so I guess it's a, a partial gold build. But there were other units that obviously I knew were very strong going in. I knew that Secretary Bird was one of the things that you're always looking for on, um, on turn four. Now sometimes you may get, you not be able to use it depending on what you're opposing, what the opposing uh, team comp is. But a lot of the games where I won, I think I ended up with Secretary Bird on the team. And uh, I feel, felt like I also ended up with a lot of um, potatoes as they held food on um, quite a lot of the, the units. Potato way back was changed to block uh, chili as well. I'm not sure if that happened on the test server or if it happened afterwards. But um, they changed potato so that it blocks chili as well. And it, you know, your protective options in this pack are so limited that uh, blocking those starter battle snipes, I think, can be uh, very important at times. And there are also units like Crane here that have extremely low health. And so Potato is basically mandatory because you're going to get one shot by even a level one dolphin. Now, I think this is now the last turn or the second last turn of this battle. Um, I'm, I'm on one heart, but I think it's we're both down to one heart here. And so I'm trying to, uh, I'm going to ignore the Manta Ray's ability and just gamble on winning the next turn. I've got the Crane going behind the Gazelle, which should mean that it gets to attack twice at least. And uh, I'm just rolling an infinite supply of Cranes. I'm going for a second position Eggplant. Pteranodon, I'm not sure exactly what I was expecting to happen with the Eggplant. And this was one of the unexpected pleasures of Ranked, where your opponent makes a drastic pivot and you get the sudden panic that you're not sure if you've done the right thing. But thankfully here, the Lionfish, although they reduce the health, the Lionfish does not double hit the Manta. Otherwise that would have been a tie, I think. And then I wouldn't have had the Manta gold the next turn and the Gazelle would have shrunk down. And uh, that could have been uh, nasty. So here is the highest ELO opponent that I beat. And they've got the Star Pack, which was pretty rare. But at this point, I know for you know, you know when it's a higher ranking opponent that they know what they need to do to beat your team. So this player is going to bring in Hawk for 100% guaranteed and target the Dart Frog. And so I've put the potato on the Dart Frog to block any Hawk shots. If you didn't find the potato, I guess you could 
maneuver the baboon into the the dart frog's position um but i found the potato and that was all she wrote so i was very happy with that one i think i was probably punching the air <laughs> that i had uh, managed to find the potato in time and um yeah very satisfying win but then we have to look at the opposite end of the spectrum so this was the lowest elo opponent that i lost to and this is just a complete train wreck where uh, I have pro I probably was quite complacent here seeing their elo and thinking I don't need to do anything special to beat them. But I just ended up making so many bad decisions. You can see, I mean, my team is absolutely horrendous for turn seven here. Uh, so I must have passed up quite a few things that would have been usable. And I just kept rolling, looking for something specific. And, and it definitely can happen. So, I mean, don't beat yourself up about it if, if that happens to you in a game. And here I buy the cockatoo, even though the flea has a chocolate cake. So we only get um, two thirds of the benefit. And uh, yeah, it's uh, GG's here. I feel like uh, level three bat was just so good against, uh, against Golden Pack. I feel like Golden just doesn't have very much it can do to defend itself against uh, against weakness and then here's another one this is a weird situation here and i would played this person two or three times in a row i think but in this particular um game uh it's gonna freeze so we we've got the flea going again they've got front badger and then um i think uh, we're gonna end up killing the badger yep so what happens is the, the slug trades. Yeah, we're, we're easily gonna win because of the trumpets. But at this point, the game locks up. So I've won. I should be back in the shop, able to make some final adjustments to try and close out the game. But I'm just getting the spinning thing in the top left corner. I would be interested to know if this has happened to anyone else. This only happened once out of the 100 games. But then after a little while, I click on the little uh, settings button in the top right, but there's no option to go back to the menu. And uh, it's just counting down the time. I don't know at this point if my opponent has quit and the game just doesn't know what to do or if they're currently in the shop. So I, I alt tabbed out there <laughs> and uh, now I'm gonna check the, the menu. There's no option to abandon, there's no option to quit. There's nothing I can do. Eventually what happens is it puts me back to the shop and I have three seconds left to do something. So all I get to do is buy the Saiga Antelope. But thankfully it didn't affect the outcome of the game. They, they've bought uh, the double scorpion, but that's not going to do anything against the, uh, the slugs. Because the, uh, the slug's going to spawn. Actually, it is going to kill the, uh, the retriever. So yeah, props for them for actually doing that. But if I'd lost there, I would have been pretty upset given that I was denied the opportunity to use that shop phase. So hopefully these kind of bugs get ironed out. But uh, yeah, only happened once in, out of 100 games, so can't complain too much. All right, as promised, here is the very dry stats breakdown at the end. So 100 games played, 50 wins, 50 losses. Slightly skewed by the fact that there were five people who forfeited in there. 87 different people out of 100. That's probably to be expected. One of the issues that I did have, I mean, I guess for some people this may not be an issue, but there were many times, even in only 100 games, where I played the same person three times in a row. So we would both get back to the uh, the menu and then queue up at the same time and just immediately get matched with each other again. So a little bit frustrating there, but... Um, I guess that's just gonna be the case until more people are playing. And then uh, I looked at the ELOs of the opposing teams. So the highest ELO I faced was nine, 1937. So that's Kyogre and I, I played multiple games against Kyogre. I think I probably played four or five people in the top 10 of the leaderboard, which also speaks to the number of actual people queuing because Generally speaking, you're not expecting to play against someone who's, you know, three or four hundred ELO above you. Now, that being said, if if you are a beginner and you get matched with someone who is on the leaderboard, way up on the leaderboard, don't be afraid. 
Just play the game. It doesn't matter if you lose. You're going to lose a tiny amount of ELO. And if for some reason you happen to win, okay, maybe that's a remote possibility. But if you did win, you're going to get a huge chunk. So never be afraid to play against higher ranked players. In fact, it's really to your benefit because you're also going to learn a lot when you play them. The lowest ELO I faced was 1349. There were very, very few games against people who were below 1450. Um, and I guess that's just a symptom of the way that uh, the system works. You know, you start at 1500, so you have to lose quite a few games to drop down. Um, and uh, I guess a lot of the people who are playing 1v1 probably already had a little bit of a vested interest in 1v1 anyway. So the, the, num the, the volume of beginners versus experienced players may not actually be that high compared to the eight player lobbies. So then I looked at the average ELO faced. So if I won, the average ELO was 1597. And then if I lost, it was 1513. So not a huge difference, but basically what you'd expect. Unfortunately, there are also players like Kyogre who are so far ahead of everyone else that they kind of skew these numbers a little bit. So um, I, I was kind of reasonably happy that these weren't too far apart. And then to try and dial in a little bit closer uh, on the stats for a golden pack versus everything else, bearing in mind again that I am not playing op golden pack 100% optimally. I mean, no one is, even the best players are, aren't playing 100% optimally. But wins when I faced an ELO of greater than 1500 was 29, so 42% of the games where I faced 1500 or higher. But if we just increase that slightly to 1550, and that's to try and avoid the people who are just starting, you know, they're at 1500 even because they've never played before. My win rate plummets down to 28% and only 11 games won. Overall, I was fairly happy with the, the results given that I'd never really played 1v1 seriously before. There was definitely a learning curve and towards the end of the 100 games, I was clearly doing a lot better than at the beginning. And lastly, we've got this breakdown of the packs that my opponents were playing. So no surprise, the vast majority of people played turtle packs, 79 out of 100, which is a massive majority. And then the next highest was 10 from Puppy, seven from Star, and then four for Golden. But there were also duplicates within these. So in Golden, I played the same person twice. In Star, I played, I think, two people twice. And in Puppy, I think there were two or three repeats as well. So it's not surprising when this is the only free pack that you're going to get a huge percentage here. But it was also quite notable that a lot of the high-ranking players I was playing were playing Turtle. So both games, Kyogre played Turtle and Abenine played Turtle as well. Uh, I think uh, Black Magic played Turtle as well, although I'm not sure if they're still in the top 10. But basically, almost everyone I played who had, uh, you know, 1700 or higher was playing Turtle Pack. There was one who played Star, and actually I showed a clip of that earlier. I think probably this shows that the game needs another free pack. I mean, I already felt like the game needed another free pack for Arena. You know, you need to draw players in and adding a, a free option that's a static pack and not just having Turtle as the only option, I think would make a big difference because it also means that the people who are um, playing Turtle are also mostly just playing mirror matches. And uh, although that is, you know, good for fairness, it's not great for variety. And certainly I was pretty sick at the end of the 100 games of just playing Golden versus Turtle over and over again. And uh, it was always a nice surprise to see Puppy and Star pop up and then the few uh, people playing Golden along with me. It was also nice, but usually it would be six or seven games minimum of Turtle in a row before I would play one of these other packs. The queuing system is also a little bit of an issue. You can queue to play a mirror match only. And so you probably don't have much of an issue finding a game if you queue for turtle mirrors. But if you're trying to queue for mirrors on these, you're gonna be waiting for a very long time and you may not even find anyone within your, uh, you know, within the time that you're willing to dedicate to the game. So I think definitely some improvements that can be made, but this is the first iteration that's been available. So we're not expecting everything to be perfect on day one of Ranked in SAP. So let me know in the comments below what has your experience been so far of Ranked? Are you enjoying it? Do you have a favorite pack to play or a favorite pack to play against? 
Uh, have any units surprised you in their fact that they're actually more useful in ranked than they are in arena? Uh, would love to hear your opinions.